Hey guys, I know it's been a while since I've done a video for you. I have been uh, on the road traveling for work like crazy this summer. Hopefully I've got a bunch to get back to you guys at. I've got uh, PV Triple X amplifier for repair. That is an absolute beast of a road warrior. It has been toured, used, abused, beat down. Excited to bring that one back to life. I've got a uh, PRS Archon which I have not been in any of the PRS USA amps yet. I'm excited to get into that, see what the build quality looks like for myself and show you guys that. I've got another, another Fender hot rod. Please people stop buying these, they're trash. They're junk, just don't do it. I've got a Marshall TSL in for repairs. Again, don't buy it, they're junk. This one, another tech has been into it, and it's usually if another tech works on something and I get it, there's a bunch of stuff I gotta go through and find and fix before I can fix what was wrong with it first. This one is a tech that I know and respect and have learned a lot from. So if he worked on it and couldn't fix the problem and send it to me, I'm worried. There's something big going on in there. Uh, I've got another uh, 100 watt, one of the big jet cities. That is an amp in really clean shape that works fine. We are going to gut it and build it into something that it is not. So that'll be an exciting one. Stay tuned for that. What I've got for you today. So, like I said, I've been on the road for work for two months. I've been in Vegas, which is wonderful. Uh, give me a few months. I will be there permanently working on it. So, I got back, and I had a huge pile of mail waiting for me after two months away. Uh, first thing, I forgot to pause my Amazon subscriptions. So, like, the cat has a lot of cat food. He ain't going hungry. <laughs> Um, another one I found and this package, I wasn't, uh, I really was, I was confused when I saw it because it's from Head and Hi-Fi in Germany. And I'm like, what, what did I order from Germany? I have no memory of this. So I looked back and I found, <clears throat> I had ordered months ago, months and months and months, like before COVID months ago. I ordered a uh, <clears throat> ODAC and objective headphone amplifier kit. And when I ordered it, my card, so I have to contact these people and make sure they got paid because my card kicked it back as fraud. And then I got an email from Head & Hi-Fi from the company that said, like a couple weeks later, that said due to COVID, they weren't shipping internationally. And again, canceled my order. So I have to get a hold of them and make sure they got paid. I, I appreciate what they do. I, I want them to get their money. <clears throat> so... Let's, uh, let's take a look at what I got here. All right, here's the box I got. Again, I was totally confused by this. I didn't know what it was. From Head & Hi-Fi in Germany. Um, just says electronics kit. It just says it's an electronics kit. <clears throat> so I opened it up. And objective to head fire, headphone amplifier and ODAC. Sweet, exciting. I did not remember even that I bought that. And I'm pretty sure that my card was not charged. So getting in, we've got a bag of components, uh, resistors, caps, IC sockets, switches. Um, I looked through this earlier. It all looks to be um, I just dumped it out. Really standard kind of quality components. Um, nothing, nothing like uber high end, like a lot of the hi-fi audio I deal with. 
but good parts. Um, <clears throat> there's a wall wart transformer. There is the ODAC board, and that one is pre-assembled. That's all micro circuit, little tiny stuff. In a DIY kit, most people would not probably have the skill set. Like I build stuff like this by hand, but like some of these IC chips are, look how tiny those solder joints are. They're very, very, very difficult to do by hand. So it, it's outside the scope of most DIY people. So that board comes assembled. Uh, there's a USB cord, a uh, knob for the volume. It's another part I spilled out of the bag. <clears throat> it came with a sucker, lollipop. I'm assuming something German. We'll have to see what that's about later. Just put that over there. Um, circuit board for the objective headphone amplifier. It looks very good quality. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with the objective and ODAC, this is an open source design. It was designed by uh, NWAV Guy. He designed it totally free, open source. So if you shop around, there are a number of different companies making these kits or selling these as a complete amplifier that you can just buy ready to plug in and go. Um, really cool, really cool thing this guy's done. Um, there's also a ton, a huge ton. There's so much documentation out there about this. And if you go online on forums, so much discussion about this project and how to build it and different ideas. There can be a lot to sort through. It came with a pair of nine volt batteries. Oh look, they even say head and hi-fi. <laughs> That's cool. They've got their own batteries, people. Um, you can build this to be battery operated. Um, there is a bag of a static bag with uh, op amps, um, different stuff. That, got to mention going in, that is one thing people, seems to be a problem shot when people build these amps is some of these chips can be very, very sensitive to mishandling. So a lot of people build these and the initial problem they have is they, they, they don't power on well. And it's because these chips don't get handled properly. Um, then we have an enclosure here in the box, which is standard extruded, extruded aluminum. Uh, we have a back panel. <coughs> And I did go a few extra bucks. I went fancy. And I got the uh, bamboo wood face panel. So doesn't that look cool? <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to sort out the parts a little bit. And then I'll, uh, I'll catch back up with you guys. And we'll, uh, we'll start building this thing. Okay. I've got all of my parts sorted. Uh, put a bunch of the resistors and stuff on the tester, so I've got them labeled for their values. I did discover, and this is why it's important before you begin building, to go through your parts list. I was missing all of the diodes that were supposed to be in here. None of them were here. Um, good thing for me, I buy by the hundred or even thousands of some of these components at a time. So... I got them covered. I had them. One thing I found, so an option when you build this, you can build this so that the, uh, the DAC component, the DAC board, is either on board, like it, it'll fit into the enclosure with the uh, ODAC amp, or the objective amplifier. It'll fit. 
you lose the, cap the capability to run it on batteries if you do that. Or you can put it into its own separate enclosure. And I found I have a little, uh, this little guy, aluminum box. He fits perfectly in there. So I just need to do some uh, figuring out to secure it in place so it doesn't move inside that. But perfect fit. So I'm going to do that. Next step will be to start populating parts onto the circuit board. As always, you'll start with your smallest components, your resistors, your diodes first and work from there. So I'll get all of that populated onto the circuit board and I'll show you what that looks like before we go to the next step. Okay, I have all of those diodes, resistors, populated mounted on the board. I will say this is probably a little more of an intermediate to an advanced uh, kit to build some of these, because this is designed to be run on batteries. So it's designed to be compact. You can grab it, throw it in your bag and go. So it's small. Some of the circuit traces are a little close together. Um, look, you know, if you're not maybe skilled with soldering they might be a little more tricky and as i said before some of these uh ic chips in here are a little uh sensitive to handling just things to be aware of when you're building this um, so with that done next i'm going to install all these little tiny capacitors i'll get those in and we'll show you what that looks like okay we're moving pretty quick now i've got all of those little capacitors installed as you can see, the little tiny guys. There are still some more uh, bigger capacitors to go. One thing I missed when I was doing resistors, um, this circuit, this is really cool. If you're new to the headphone hi-fi or uh, the headphone, the head-fi, head-fi audio world, um, you may not be aware that they're, not all headphones uh, operate the same. There are some headphones that are more difficult to drive or push with an amplifier than others. So if you have some of those more difficult headphones, they can be really good, but you can also spend a lot more money on a headphone amp to drive them. This design, there's just a few resistors in here. Um, kind of these four right here that set the high and the low gain. There is a there is a gain selector switch. Um, and it comes with a whole pile of extra resistors. And if you uh, go online and Google, you'll find some documentation that will tell you what kind of what values you need for what application. I don't have any crazy headphones like that. So I just went with the uh, the stock recommended values. That'll make this uh, the most useful for every everyday use. Um, so there's that. My next step, my next uh, components that are going to sit lowest to that circuit board are going to be my uh, IC chip sockets. There's four of those. There are two audio jacks, input and output. I, uh, I have, it's the exact same part, guys. I have a green one. So I'm going to color code. I'm going to use the green one I have. I'm not going to use the black one it came with. I'll use a black one for the input and I'll use a green one for the output just to color code a little bit because I like that. It is the exact same part though. I'll get those installed and then we'll move on. All right, I've got those front jacks mounted and I got the power jack mounted as well. I didn't mention that, I don't think. I've also, uh, to this front center lug on our input jack, I've added an extra bit of wire that will ground to the chassis of our, like our enclosure chassis, um, just to reduce noise um, later on. Next, I've got two switches that go on the front panel. And I've got some more capacitors that go in here. Some of our little bit bigger, taller capacitors. I will get that assembled. And we'll take a look at that. All right, we are really getting down there now. I've got a few bigger capacitors. 
uh, volume control and LED battery connectors. Uh, thing to show you on this, so the batteries sit kind of right here and right here on the board. Or if you're using the uh, ODAC module in it, that would also go there. So choose one or the other. I'm going to mount this in a separate box just because I have other headphone amplifiers. I've got a couple of shit audio amplifiers and I've got a Bellari amplifier that I like those units and I don't intend to stop using them. I also have the uh, shit multi-bit DAC, but that's, that's kind of become tied into my main hi-fi system. I, I really want to use the ODAC in my uh, bedroom headphone setup. So that will go in its own box. This will get set up to use batteries. If you were to set this up to run the DAC, there is uh, this P1. So you can uh, connect that on the circuit board directly. And there are some circuit traces on the bottom of the board that you have to modify or cut depending on how you want that to function. So be sure to get online, read the instructions if you're doing that. I'll get the rest of these components uh, installed and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at this circuit board. All right, I've got all of those uh, capacitors, other components installed. Again, I would say this is a, a moderate to advanced level build just because of the number of components and how close some of the solder contacts are. All I've got left is to install our uh, IC stuff. Um, again, just want to stress the, uh, from what I see online, a lot of the problems people have with these builds is mishandling these components. They are uh, shock and static sensitive. So just be careful handling them. You should be fine. Um, I'll get that installed and we'll take a look. All right, we are built. All of our ICs are in, uh, pretty easy. Some of these you're a little tight on space, pushing these into the sockets, so be aware of that. Um, otherwise, no real problems. I'm gonna go ahead and get this put together in the enclosure and we'll, uh, we'll see if it works, see how it sounds. And here it is, um, our Objective 2 headphone amplifier in one piece. Um, not too bad of a build. If I had to say anything for a criticism, it would be, uh, just our final fit and finish. It feels homemade, which is fine if you bought the kit and did it yourself. But if you paid uh, twice the price extra to buy one finished and it, it just comes in this same case, you're going to be... I don't know. I would be disappointed just in the like the finished feel of the final product. Uh, for a do-it-yourself kit, it's cool. I like it. People will notice it and they'll be like, "That you made that one yourself, didn't you? Um, had it hooked up just with my uh, kind of crappy uh, shop headphones out here. It works. Sounds all right. Um, but there it is. Whole thing all done. Um, I still have to uh, mount the ODAC in its box. I'll mess with that probably tomorrow. Uh, for right now, though, here's the Objective 2 built and done. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe. Um, thanks a lot.